Good morning to you, my dearest brothers and sisters on YouTube. It is Tim here, and right now it's just gone 7 a.m. I've finally got myself in a good sleep routine since getting back from Montenegro, and I've got a busy day ahead in the life of Tim the Human. Some adventure, some business to attend, and I thought it'd be a good day to vlog a day in the life. So thank you guys for joining me. Hope you enjoy the day. Let's get on with our first task. As the sun rises beautifully on another gorgeous summer's day, my first task is to drop this bad boy Cumulo for its 50,000 mile service. Hi Cumulo. Oh, dropping off Ford Transit Connects. You're not canoeing now, are you? I we am. don't we I... don't do courtesy canoes, man. I know, I know. <laughs> Just dropped Cumulo off for his service. Love that car. Maybe when I pick him up, I'll show you a little more about him. But for now, got to get back home. Well, it's rush hour right now, and you know normally when you drop your car off for a service, sometimes they give you a service car to drive home in. Well, I booked it last minute and there was no service car. So today we've got a different vehicle to get home. Might've noticed the paddle was there. As you might've heard the guy mention, it's gonna be a canoe or an inflatable kayak or a pack raft. Raft set up, ready to go. When I drove here, it was about five miles. Oh, I better get in. <laughs> Is this a world's first? Has anyone else ever dropped the car off for service and gone back in a pat raft? I wonder. Right, we're on our way. <laughs> okay, well I just vlogged one of these the other day so I'm not gonna make loads of footage. Gorgeous morning for it. No idea how long it's gonna take. Tunnels. Here. The day I got this raft, a few weeks ago, I vlogged a little mission I did where I was able to go from my house onto the canal, onto a little river, which joined a big river, and then back to my house in one beautiful loop. And I've just joined that spot now where I came out of there. But today I came, I'm coming straight up the Trent, not from the Dove. So we're back on familiar territory, 45 minutes in to this bit of a slog, but it's a lovely morning. Bird I've never seen before. What is that? Bridge, power station. Means we're nearly home. Pull up in my backyard. It's my little docking station. Made it home. So that was exactly eight kilometers, about five miles. An hour and a half, so it's 9.30 now. A few of you asked me what pack raft it was actually in the last video, I forgot to mention. It's an alpaca raft, I'll leave a link to it down below. They make really good pack rafts. But here we are, pull up back at my house. Okay, leave that to dry there. Don't need the life vest anymore. Right, time to start the working day. First, actually, let me get hydrated. See, I'm not a coffee person. If I drink coffee, I like the taste of it, but the next day I feel depressed or down. Coffee is an antidepressant. And because I never drank it in my twenties, I'm so sensitive to it. So I just don't bother. So I drink clean water, still using my distiller 10 or 12 years later. Three rules with water, purify it, or it could be from a spring, but I just distill it. Keep it in glass and add a bit of salt to it. So I remineralize it. I don't just have pure distilled water. Add a bit of salt. Number one supplement, only supplement I use, if you can even call it a supplement, the OG original supplement, salt. Original sugar water salt. You don't need no energy drinks. Glucose, magnesium, hydration with the water. When you run your own business, anyone that runs their own business will know there's two parts of business, two stages in your day with business. There's maintenance and there's development. When I say maintenance, those are maintenance tasks with the business. So checking the emails, maintaining the stock, yeah, speaking to customers, stuff that you have to do day to day to keep the business ticking, accounts, all that kind of stuff. 
Then there's development. Development is stuff that will take the business forward. So for me, that's things like creating a YouTube video, creating a new rope, wink, wink, developing product, planning a workshop, something like that. Th these are things that in some regards help to develop and get the business out to more people or take the business further or to go deeper with the people that are already there. So there's two things. Now, generally it's best to work on development first. Well, I consider I'm making this vlog right now. This is somewhat development, sharing my story with you guys. And then there's maintenance. So that's kind of like the email stuff. So that's what we log into now. So for me, a lot of my maintenance is checking the Trainerize app, which is where I deliver my rope flow course. People can DM me within that, so I speak to all the customers there. Some customers can't get their logins, or their logins not worked, or the logins expired, so they email me and have to reinstate their login. All pretty easy stuff. Takes me like half an hour to an hour and a half, two hours on a busy day. So I thought I'd share some of the main softwares and programs that I kind of run my business with. Shopify is where I sell my ropes and courses. I use Trainerize to organize and structure the course. It's a really good, there's other ones like True Coach and other ones I've tried in the past, but Trainerize works best for what I want to deliver. Then you need an email marketing mailing newsletter software. I used to use MailChimp, that's kind of what I just fell into to collect my, create my mailing list. But I, about a year ago, I migrated over to Klaviyo, which has been pretty good ever since then. So one of the things I had to do today is write an email uh, a mail at a campaign as they call it within the thing because none other than the man himself the inventor of rope flow david weck is coming to the uk in september and he's asked me to help collaborate on a free rope flow jam workshop event meetup in london um on september the 11th at hampstead heath we're going to be doing that so i've just put an email out and within Clavio, why I really like Clavio is you can target uh, people by area. So I've just sent, I'm sending this email to everyone in the mailing list, within my mailing list, within a thousand miles of London. So it doesn't, if you're in America, it's not so relevant that Wex coming to the UK, but he's coming to Europe, he's coming to the UK. So everyone within a thousand miles, it kind of covers France and Germany and most of the countries within a region. He's coming here. He's also going to be doing WEC method qualifications in England for the first time ever. I got into rope flow. I discovered it through David Weck in 2019. I flew to San Diego and did my Weck method qualification. He's, they're actually running one. Him and Chris are coming over and they've asked me to help be a kind of assistant coach at that. That's going to be the weekend after that workshop. So I'll leave a link to that down below. They've actually given me a 20% discount code. I'm not here to plug that, but just if you wanted to come to that Weck method qualification, there's a discount code and you can access that down below. But ultimately, Wex coming to the UK, don't worry, I'm going to make sure I capture some of that. His first time in England, um, so I'm really excited for that. So that's what I've had to do is create an email today to go out to all the customers. Maybe you're one of them and you've seen this. By the time you watch this video, you had that email from me today. Um, let's have a look. There's an Eventbrite link so they can sign up for free to come to the workshop so I can track numbers. I reckon we get, what do you reckon, folks? You reckon we get 100 people in London swinging rope in Hampstead Heath? I reckon we can do that. I put out like one story on Instagram and we got 30 signups. So it's filling up fast. So yeah, if you want to come, Eventbrite link below, come meet WEC or if you want to check out WEC Method Qualification. You might have noticed the t-shirt I'm wearing. Any of you know who this is from? Shout out my brother Josh at Strength Side. Got my favorite number on the back, 24 as well. One of the things I did this month for the first time ever in four years of business was actually pay an influencer. You know when you listen to podcasts or you're watching a YouTube video and you get the Athletic Greens ads or the Better Help adverts or whatever comes up in the people in the sphere that you're listening to. This year, this month, I paid my brother, uh, paid him, I hope I don't think he mind me sharing with you, $2,500 to put an advert in one of his videos for Rope Flow. And I was stoked that he was up for it. He's already given me so much for free anyway in, in doing collabs and promoting my brand from the position he's in on YouTube with over a million subscribers, which I'm incredibly grateful for. So to actually be able to pay him some money to do an advert, and he was really thrilled because he actually really believes and wants to support what I'm doing here and has actually gone through the programs himself. So it's a really cool moment for me to actually pay an influencer, you know, an influencer, a positive influencer, some money to promote the brand. And we made a, a, a great few days of sales from that as well. So it was really a win-win for us both. And maybe you guys, you know, it's a win-win when you discover rope flow from it and it's and you enjoy that. So maybe you discover me through through Strength Side if you did. Big up yourself and big up Josh. So other than that advert, 
most of my business is done from organic marketing through YouTube and Instagram, through promotion and through word of mouth, giving the customers great customer service, giving them a great product, great value. And then word of mouth is the absolute best marketing on the planet. But I say that to set up the point that I actually have a call at 10 o'clock this morning. My friend Anna, um, but she's really a specialist in online um, marketing and advertising. And she's been helping me with Google Adverts. A couple of months ago, we set up some Google Adverts. I find paid marketing kind of challenging sometimes for myself. I don't want to like force my brand on people who haven't ad asked for it. But I think I've found a happy medium uh, and she understands that side of the integrity that I want to keep with the business. And so me and Anna are going to hop on a call in a minute and she's going to just give me an update on how the Google ads that we've been putting out have been performing. Hey, Anna. Uh, yeah, good, thank you. It's very rainy here in Australia right now. Very, very rainy. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks so much. Yeah, and, and stay in touch and we'll speak soon. Bye, sis. Bye, right. bye. All right. Amazing. Anna's so helpful. She's so good at what she does. Last few bits on the computer and then we can have some breakfast. Just check in the Trainerize group chat. Some woman, Dorothy Nelson, big up yourself, Dorothy, said, I took my rope to my sea dip group yesterday. Great fun. Yeah, man. Nothing like a bit of rope and a wild swim. Loving everyone's updates from around the globe. Shout out, Dorothy. This is the this is the uh, the group chat in the app. I think I'm done for the morning. That's me on, on there for the morning. Now I can go and make some breakfast. People often ask me, what I'm eating right now, so you can maybe get a glimpse of this. I'm still using my trusty rice cooker for most meals. Because I've been away and I'm going away again on Friday, I don't ha normally have my Riverford shop filling up my fridge, but I don't have that right now. So I'm pretty, uh, <laughs> I'm on simple, simple food, choose rice and beans, man. Carrot, peel the carrot in there. I know, it just looks like a bit of mush, but that is good fuel. You know, the symbol for qi in Chinese is made up of two Chinese symbols, the symbol for air and the symbol for rice. So all you need for qi is rice and air. Obviously that's not true, but I don't know. I always like that fun little stat for you there. Yeah. Those of you that know my job is selling rope float ropes, might know that I have, oh, the lighting's all right, okay. Might know that I have three sizes of ropes. And I've been sold out for about a month of the lightest rope. Well, yesterday on this pallet came a package of 10 boxes of the lightest rope. Now, from when I order the rope at the rope factory, it takes about eight to 10 weeks in a wait list in a queue of other ropes getting made before my rope gets made. So I've been waiting for this to arrive now it's here, basically, I'm making ropes as fast as I can to restock a website. So that is our task for the day. Now, when I get the ropes, they come. These lovely, oh, 200 meters of rope, all in one reel like that. This rope is made 100% from recycled plastic from the oceans, this one. Now, when it comes on the reel, I have to take it off the reel in order to work it. So let's try and do that now. Also, as you might be aware, the Olympics are actually on right now. So perfect opportunity for me to do this while putting on some Olympics. Wow. Do you notice anything different about me? I forgot I had a hairdressing appointment and I was late and I just dropped everything and ran and got my hair cut. <laughs> right, we're back. I'm gonna eat and then we're gonna finish this rope fiasco that's going off. Right. There we go. Fry some beans. I'm gonna add some tomato. The best vegan cheese. Coconut oil. Mostly just coconut oil and starch, sea salt. Little butter bowl, little butter, my daily butter bowl. We gonna eat this. Watch some more old lamb pigs. So, <clears throat> for the fourth time in my life, I've got glass in my foot. 
and this happened like a few weeks ago. And it, normally I've had glass in my foot in the ball of my foot and it's the worst thing ever. One time I went to hospital, got it out. Second time I went to hospital, they couldn't find it and couldn't get it out. Then I found a natural remedy online, which I've used twice since in the ball of my foot. Cause you, when it's in the ball of your foot, you just can't function. This time it's in the heel. And I, I thought it was just a bruised heel for like a week or so. And it's just not got better. And I've realized there's actually a specific pinpoint spot. So I'm gonna use the remedy. You can use sugar and soap, but I tried that last night and it's not really worked. So I'm gonna try a different one, baking soda and water. Cause if you live barefoot life, man, it's gonna happen. And if you, you can't go to the hospital every time, that is no way to live. So I'm gonna put some baking soda and water and a plaster and hopefully we can get this out. Okay. Pasted and plastered the foot. Praying that works because it is just no fun. Have you ever had glass in your foot and struggled to get it out? Or do you have any home remedies? Please let me know. I'm not decided which one's the best yet. So hopefully this is the deepest it's ever been. Hoping it still works. All the comments on YouTube seem pretty positive. So we'll see. Okay. A bit later than I thought I'd get to it. But here we are. Ropes in the box. We've measured it out. Got the right length. The fan on the go. Gonna cut us some ropes. You don't believe in a God. And unfortunately on earth, most of us want to break laws. We have an emotional desire to break laws. But, and I'm talking not the laws of the land, so it's a but natural laws. Silver in the BMX. Done. 50 ropes, somewhere around 50 ropes, 200 meter reels. When we get about 50 or so ropes, done. Kind of done, just standing there. What do we want to do now? Might just lie down, read a book or something for a bit. Tell you, it's one of my pride and joys right here. My bookshelf. Not the punching bag. Well, the punching bag is handy too. But what have I recently read? Let me show you something I recently read. Postmortem journal. If you don't know, one of my biggest hobbies, passions outside of movement is, well, spirituality, but studying the afterlife. And there's, I've read 20, maybe close to 30 books on afterlife. That's a book channeled in 1960s by a woman named, a medium named Jane Sherwood. Supposedly, it's Lawrence of Arabia when he passed over to the spirit world and he's sharing his story back of what the spirit world is like. What to A lot of the books I read are basically in anticipation of the afterlife, what it's like and what's to come. And, you know, we're thinking infinitely, thinking eternally. We think it, we prepare now and it's all about your soul condition, understanding your emotions and being a more loving person. All, every single book is the same thing. You reap what you sow, basically. So, you know, work on being a more loving person now. Yeah, it's one thing to be intellectually aware of it. It's another thing to know it here. And that's the hard part, right? I can intellectually get things, but getting it into the heart when the heart's been hardened for years. That's the process. That's the emotional, spiritual journey right there. The soul healing. And then the next book, I just finished that one. So my next book is this. The Boy Who Saw True, and it's a diary from a boy from like the 19, what is it, 1920s or something? 1920s to 1940s, something like that, around then. A boy who could see spirits and wrote a diary about it. And is, I'm only a few chapters in, but it's really interesting. His parents are just thinking that he's crazy or a liar when he says he can see his uncle. He told his dad not to sit in the chair because his uncle was there. And his parents were like, you rotten liar. And he's like, what? You know, this kid's just being punished for <laughs> for just saying what he sees. And he can see auras of people. And he asks, like, why is this woman blue? And why is this guy got yellow coming from him and stuff? But yeah. And it's just the innocence of a boy who's like 12 or 13 with like bad spelling errors and stuff like that. Really cool. Anyway, yeah, I'm just going to, I think it's a good time just to chill for a minute. Been full on most of the day. Okay, we back up. 
Just had a look, the email went out a couple hours ago um, about David Wex uh, and my collaboration workshop and the Eventbrite is now at 63 spaces gone. So <laughs> hopefully this, I mean, that's, that's I'm sure it's gonna fill up another 15 or 20 in the next 24 hours. If you guys watch this on YouTube, get a ticket. I mean, I only put 100 on there. I'd happily, if more than 100 people come, but please, let's fill that up to 100 and then I can release more tickets. Um, but if you wanna come, definitely a good chance. So I got this new prototype on a bit of a whim. I just messaged my rope company. Have you got any heavy ropes I could try? Thicker ropes. Got a couple samples, a couple prototypes. I've been playing with this one ever since. You might've seen it in some of my Instagram stories. I think I made about three, at least three posts using this rope since I got it. Weighing well over one kilo, which is pretty much more than double my current heaviest rope. So as I'm cutting all the little ropes, the light ropes, which are great for footwork, since I've been playing with this one, I discovered one of the best uses for a heavy rope. And that is one-legged flow. One-legged flows with a heavy rope is so nice because it gives you something to resist against. So as I'm swinging it, I can lift my leg and kind of the leg, the limb acts like a counterweight, like a squirrel's tail. I've got the big heavy rope and then I have to react with the leg. So playing with some single leg balance with the heavy rope seems to be really where it comes into its own. Drag and rolls as well. So there's that one-legged stuff and then generally just swinging it, Hanuman's dancing with it. Just really good shoulder workout. So for me, it's given me like a fresh spark of life in my rope flow practice. Kind of rinsed all the ropes I've got, something new. If you're interested, I'm looking to launch it in the next couple of weeks. So just stay tuned. I might do a video on the channel or just stay tuned to the emails. But yeah, hopefully within the next two weeks, I'll have something to, to show to launch this. I might only do uh, make to order. So I might just make one batch, get the orders in and then make the batches and send it all out personally um, rather than have it on the website permanently. I don't know how I want to do it yet. That might be a more efficient, economical way for me to do it. It's just to let everyone know you've got a week to order a heavy rope and then just make all the orders that people to order. We'll see. These are the decisions I've got to make when you run a business on your own. But yeah, for now, A little play, a little sweat on. But yeah, really enjoying the heavy rope. Costs a lot more. The thing with rope is, because it's round, as you get thicker, it gets exponentially more expensive because it needs exponentially more material because of how circles work, right? So it's a little bit more expensive, but definitely nice to have a new addition to the arsenal. Get me excited to rope again. So like you saw me earlier, I've cut all of these. What I normally do is in the evening when I wind down, put on some, uh, what am I watching? House of Dragon at the moment. House of Dragon, got the Olympics, the swimming's on at the moment. Um, put that on and I'll, I'll tie. Since basically I started to cap the ends of the ropes, those that have got the OG ropes that realize I don't have these on them, I've started to cap them and brand them and I put them in nicer packaging now as well in a nice box rather than the bag. And all that process takes me about three or four times longer to make every rope than it used to make me. I used to be able to just cut them, tie them, send them, but I wanna give a slightly nicer product. So it takes me a lot longer to make each rope. For now, still making them on my own. I'd, at some point I might hire, hire someone. I've, I've showed a few friends, a few friends have helped me along the way. Shout out Mo, shout out Ed, shout out Peter. Um, Rob might be coming tomorrow to help me make some. Um, but for now, I do pretty much all the ropes. But yeah, the lighter ropes, the piccolos, are really good for footwork. They're, you think they're lighter, they're closer to a jump rope, but a jump rope's almost too thin, you know, there's barely any feedback. Because they're a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier, there's a little bit of feedback, but you can still move your feet really fast because you think you want to move with every revolution, you can take a step. That's kind of the, the magic of the rope. So for footwork, you see there's boxing on the Olympics right now, that kind of footwork, martial arts, I definitely recommend a lighter rope. Then for more grounding strength, I mean, I'd still recommend both ropes. I think for full practice, it's like there's stuff you can do with a light kettlebell that you can't do with a heavy. There's stuff you do with a heavy that you can't really do with a light because of the, what it demands of the body. Same with the ropes. You're swinging something. There's a, there's a place 
for all sizes of ropes. But if you just have one rope, Golden Teacher. <laughs> Golden Teacher, I've been using that the most this year anyway, so. Tell you what, here's something. Speaking of the Olympics, I'm absolutely gutted. The athletic starts next week. I even thought about doing like a live stream, watching the 100 meter final, watch along. Let's watch along some Olympics athletics, you know. I love watching it so much. Um, I don't talk about that much on this channel, but you know I'm into biomechanics, so I love the movement. I've booked a silent retreat next week, starting from Sunday night. The 100 meter men's final is Sunday night. I'm going to miss, maybe it's a lesson, a sign from the universe to let go. I'm missing the 100 meter men's final of the Olympics once every four years for the start of my silent retreat. And then the whole week is when all the athletic goes on. And then by the end of it, pretty much all the gold medals have gone. And then I come out of the retreat. So this year, maybe in four years time, we'll do a watch along to the Olympics. But this time I'm a bit gutted. I'm on a silent retreat for it. Ah, well, I'll catch up afterwards. Anyway, yeah. This is his neighbor's dog, Sushi. Playing some Kingdom Rush. Got some uh, canoeing going on, eh? Whoa. Take this guy out. So no call from about my car. Assuming that means they're going to keep it till tomorrow. No other option but that now. My plan was... To cycle back. I thought that'd be quite cool. Get the kayak one way, cycle the other way, you know, compare how long it is, the journey, whatever. Anyway, thought that'd be a cool video if I finished it with like a cycle back. Anyway, don't have my car. But I have one other thing planned today. I did do some paddling earlier with my kayak. I've also got a game of paddle planned this evening with my mate Adam with two of his mates. Um, so we're going to go play that in Derby. I don't have a car now, so I've asked him if he can come pick me up. But yeah, he's going to pick me up in sometime in the next hour to go and play some paddle. Here we go. Wait for my mate Adam to pick me up. Hey, look at this guy. Hey, he's ready, look at this. Are going to win today or what? Are you, yeah, the, are you the highest rank in paddle out of everyone tonight? Yeah, Adam. Oh, Adam's good, is he? I've yeah. played once. Uh, with no, we've just been my mate, so I don't really know. You get it, you. Okay, but no tactics that you want to tell me. Some go to the net, some stay. I, I stay back. I do. I'm down to go net then, you know. You, can, you, you know me, don't you? All right, you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Um, we... The spot, oh, sorry, tell close. Okay, it's a good spot. You got Millennium Wood. It begins. Let's drop the phone away. Let me start. I'll let you know how I get on. Won the first game. Let's go, Adam, mate. Game two. Let's do it. Easy win, baby. <laughs> you win. Just That's again. Oh. Yeah. Win again. 5-4. 5-4. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, I love it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They got us 5-4, there we go. That was so fun. That was actually so sick. We won three games and lost one. So fun to have something to apply all the biomechanics to, because I just, I stay sharp. I play five aside for a bit, but it's just too intense. I just didn't like the intensity. If it wasn't friendly, it was competitive. Whereas that is just kind of a little bit competitive, but you can't overexert or get burnt out. But yeah, so sick. Oh, we are home. That was actually so sick. Let me know if you play paddle before. I'll definitely play that again now. All right. I feel pretty tired, but I definitely need to shower. And then we'll, we'll wrap up this video. I want to look. It's the end of the month now. So let's see. I think the title of this video is something to do with the business. So we should get back to that. Oh, what a day. That shower felt so good after today. So good. Little cold evening shower. It's late now as well. Later than past my bedtime. We're gonna have some fruit though. Winding down, it's the 31st of July. So that means it's the end of the month. Um, 
And I thought the theme for this video was gonna be more business related, how I run my business, you know, five figures a month, entrepreneurial fitness business. So I thought, I, you know, I got nothing to hide. We'll look at, I'll show you what I made for the month. So this month, this is how much we made in sales. Through way of the rope, these are the figures. With Shopify, 18,000 for the month. Now that's that's a very good month for me. I'm very happy just to hit 10,000 a month in sales. Um, you know, and that's not all profit. You know, I got to buy all my rope materials. I spent seven or eight grand on ropes this month, just on material. All the postage, I get a lot of orders from America, which cost me 30 odd pounds per package to send it. So all of that, that's all included within that price. But cannot complain to have a one man business right now. That's I'm very happy with that. Feel like it's fulfilling. I'm providing a service. I don't feel like I'm ripping anyone off. I feel like I'm giving good customer service to everyone. I'm not like avoiding emails or ignore. I speak to everyone that messages me. If you buy something and you email me, you know that it's me that you speak to. If you're in the course, you know it's me that you speak to. So I'm very blessed with what I have. Now, people may see that and they go, oh my God, I would be so happy if I just had that. It will not, money doesn't buy your happiness, is very true. Like, other challenges come to you when you have this. Yeah, like, I could spend most days and barely do anything, but it's not fulfilling to do nothing with your time. It's not fulfilling just to run around chasing addictions with your time or just to, you know, the kayaking stuff is fun, but I, I wouldn't just do it every day on my own. It'd be lonely and boring and you just feel like, what am I doing? Like, Today's an example of a kind of a busy day. You know, I'm making, I'm making ropes. Like that's there's some, something tangible about that, that I'm spending my time. I'm not tired any today. I'm waiting on rubber caps so I can finish tying them. And you know, if I wasn't playing paddle or, you know, another evening I would be tying them. Or, you know, when I'm teaching a work, the most rewarding stuff is when I teach in person. I just got back from Montenegro where I was teaching it ropes in person there. So rewarding to share this practice in person. Um, so yeah, you have to find fulfillment and just, if you're motivated purely by money and then you get money, it's not fulfilling. And there's a reason you're motivated by money. It could be fear or it could be like some childhood fear that you had or your family never had money, but it's not really to do with love. And you're only really going to feel fulfilled in your business if there's, if there's like love at the core of it. And that's hard to define, you know. Um, and that's what I'm kind of trying to work out and understand. But I know that when I just chase money or my just chasing money is motivated by fear of being poor or something like that, um, I'm not sure that's what it is with me, but I want to buy it. I really want to buy a house and you guys help me do that. And hopefully this time next year I can do that. Um, but yeah, just money alone will not, isn't fulfillment. And you have other problems come along if you don't work on understanding yourself, understanding your emotional state and just, yeah, understanding love. Like it can be understood and it is definable and tangible. Um, and that's the real purpose of life on earth is to understand that. So yeah, but like I say, very grateful for my business, doing pretty good right now. I want to continue to be successful and continue to spread this. Um, so if you're someone who supported me, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you enjoy this video, let me know. I, it's something different. I thought I'd try a day in the life vlog. And I had a bit of a direction. I don't know how it's turned out. Hopefully it's turned out all right, a bit of a mishmash. Um, yeah, if you want to come to the WEC workshop, you're in the UK or you want to, don't mind traveling, definitely be cool to see you there. Look out for the heavy rope. Really cool, excited to share that rope, coming out soon. We may even have some merch, bit of a crease top, but you know, something like that. I don't just like way of the rope on a t-shirt, but the way, you know, we got the infinity pattern on the back. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next video where it might be more uh, educational rather than just a day with me, following me around. Um, <laughs> tomorrow I'm gonna pick up my car, gonna cycle back to get my car. Hey, my foot held out for paddle. That was good actually. I think the, I think the glass came out of my foot within a few hours from that baking soda. So that was a great A plus today. But yeah, enough from me today. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. God bless you all. Peace out.